following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! Yeah! Let's go, baby! Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, David Hellman, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. It is Wednesday, January 26th, 2022, Season 17, Episode number 101. Welcome to the latest edition of The Break. It is my break. Every once a week, I get to actually get away from the business of the Dallas Cowboys and come spend an hour talking Cowboys football with you guys. So it's fun. Uh, this is my fun part of the week, so I'm glad to have these guys with me. got Dave, Dave and Amber uh, all joining me, and uh, we're going to have some fun today. Uh, we're going to start this, and I actually wanted to do this. I know we, we're at the, the 101 episode, so I don't know if there are any players that no. have ever worn 101. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this a little bit in the off season. It's the off season, so we can talk about a lot of different stuff. Uh, but we're going to start each show going around the table, and we're going to let everyone kind of give us one story, one story in all sports. It can be football-related, Cowboys-related. It can be about baseball, basketball. It could be your college, whatever. One story from the previous week uh, since the last time we were on the air that you found most intriguing. So let's go around the table and do that to get us going here today. And, Nick, I'm going to start with you. Mm. Well, obviously there's other NFL stuff. I mean, like it's hard to branch out with other stuff. But I'll, actually, I just switched. I just switched in the last five seconds. That's you. Seriously, that is me. That is you. <laughs> you know, when you watch baseball – and you, and you just you know you grow up and you, the guys you mm-hmm. remember, like it's it's complete BS. It really is. They need to fix what's going on in the Hall of Fame because the guys that were the greatest players are the guys that should be in there. And I understand they messed up. Baseball messed up. They they I mean you can't come back and if you're not gonna you know you, policemen don't if it's, if there's no speed limit right here you can't come back and go well you look like you were speeding well you should have been back there trying to you and, and you know figuring out should have posted the sign yeah tell me what speed I think limit it, is. I think yeah. it's an un, it's a it's a shame that Barry Bonds Roger Clemens Mark McGuire Pete Rose are not in the Hall of Fame that is absolutely ridiculous to me because the Major League Baseball made a mistake. And then they're going to try back and we think we're going to clean it up. I think it's ridiculous. I switched that it. it was going to be about LeBron James, and then I just moved it to that. No, I actually think that was very timely, and I yeah. agree with you, by the way. I think it's – I'm not a big baseball fan, but if I were taking my son to the Baseball Hall of Fame, I would want to be able to walk through that thing and tell him all the stories ridiculous. of the guys that are there. And yeah. if you're going to do that without Barry Bonds, I just – I don't even understand how you start that conversation. I've Go always ahead. I've always thought that that – and, I mean, it happens in football, too. Like yeah. the people – People who vote for these guys play favorites. Barry Bonds was never really well liked by the media. He was kind of gruff. Yeah. Uh, and some of that was brought on by him by his sure. own actions. Sure, you know? but but yeah. If you're one of the best to ever do it, it right. shouldn't matter if you were a jerk. Right. Shouldn't matter if I'm. Mean, David Ortiz tested positive for steroids at one point during his career. Yeah. He's also he's wide he's thing. widely beloved. Yeah. That, and I just I, I hate that. Um, I think Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame. No doubt. I just I, I've never liked that. Um, yeah, I thought that was re- and I don't I don't pay super close attention to baseball either. I didn't realize like if you don't make it after enough ballots, you're yeah. just done. Right? <laughs> that's Which is also thing. so to you're me, gonna yeah. tell me that Barry Bonds just won't be in the Hall Ever. of Fame. That's I mean that's insane. And when you think of the guys that are oh it was close for like Jeff Kent or Andrew Jones, you're like stop, just stop. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, Andrew Jones, I think, had a good case for the Hall of Fame, and like he's somebody that deserves consideration. It has nothing to do with him. Yeah. But just like people's unwillingness to vote for Barry Bonds because he probably cheated at a time when everyone else did too, and was a jerk. I mean, that's basically what it comes down to. I'm like, um, he's the best hitter of a baseball I've ever seen, and by the way, was a pretty damn good fielder mm-hmm. before he ever took. And I left two out. Illicit 
and I substance. Left, and I left two guys out of that. I mean, Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire, those guys absolutely, I think, took baseball to a different level in 1998. As a non-baseball fan, I was following that. Like, yeah, you, if you ridiculous. were a sports fan, you were following that yeah. every day. Every day. Who's getting more home runs? Like, it was a fun yeah. summer of baseball, and I just— yeah, you're right. I mean, I, that again, telling the story of baseball, I think it's hard to do it without those Sorry, guys involved. that went longer than I thought. That's okay. <laughs> well, that's what this segment is going to be. Right. Mine is, mine's really tied into what we talk about here, so we can yeah. get back on track if okay. you want to. I mean, you know where I'm from. Sure. I don't think you can quantify if if you're not if you're not from there and you don't follow them. I don't think you can quantify what Sean Payton did for the New Orleans Saints. It's for the city of New Orleans. For the city, uh, and, and I want to be clear: like so much more went into fixing New Orleans after Katrina than the Saints being yeah. good at football. Um, but it was a big, big deal. At it, I mean, you're talking about a team. I looked this up before we came on when you told me what we were going to talk about. From their founding in 67 to when he got hired, they made the playoffs four times. It took them until four. four. Not 40. And four. and by the way, a lot of those were under Jim Mora when they were sharing a division with like the Walsh 49ers. And it was like, cute, you made the playoffs. Like, you're not going anywhere. Uh, they didn't win their first playoff game until the year 2000. And again, they were a... They won a wild card game and then got smoked. Like they weren't, a, they weren't really a deserving team. And so, put all that in context. Two thousand five, the city gets destroyed by a hurricane. the The franchise is like the epitome of a joke. Like teammates are robbing each other in the locker room, getting in fights. Wow. There's rumors that the owner wants to move the team to San Antonio. Which now that I've worked here for a while, I was like. How was that ever going to happen? But like, I would. when you're living in a flooded out city for the worst team in the world that just finished playing its season at LSU Stadium, you're like, yeah, who would want to keep a team here? This is a joke. Yeah. And Sean Payton comes in, and they've been to the playoffs nine times. One, he's got a nine and eight playoff record. They've been to, they won a Super Bowl. They're in the playoffs like all the time. He won seven division titles. They made it four years in a row. Probably sh- they got robbed. They should have made the Super Bowl in 2018. Uh, and it's 2021 now. If you were born in the year 2000, all you've known is the New Orleans Saints being like one of the model franchises in the NFL. And those of us that are older than that know how insane that is. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just crazy. And so I got. Emotional is not the right wor- word, but like I listened to his whole press conference yesterday, and I was like, "This is surreal." Because yeah. I mean, him and Breeze got there when I was sixteen, and and now it's it feels over. Like there's nobody left from when they first got there, yeah. except maybe Mickey Loomis, the GM. But yeah, it's just it's it's crazy. And we're gonna talk a little bit later in the show about that a little bit more, just about where he stands in the coaching hierarchy but we are. um yeah we are going to talk a little bit about it but I, one of the things I, I i thought should be mentioned i thought that i that. thought it was a timely mention just yeah, just right. based on my twitter mentions yeah, maybe yeah. Just, but I, but i do think what what gets lost sometimes and and it's because of what you just said most young people at this point i'm thinking anybody that's your age or younger probably younger much younger than you even um they probably look at drew Brees and what they know of drew Brees is oh my god hall of fame drew Brees. that was not drew Brees when he got to new orleans Drew Brees was coming out of San Diego where, Nick, I asked you this yesterday. We remember because we went up there. The Cowboys went up there and played San Diego in San Diego. And I remember watching him walk off the field with the Danian Tomlinson. We were standing in the mm-hmm. under the under the stadium. And was, he wasn't that big a guy. He was a pretty good quarterback. Yeah. But he was coming off shoulder surgery. Miami was kind of flirting with him, but they didn't go that route. And so he was not this highly coveted free agent. He was a guy that 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 it looked like. Sean Payton decided, hey, I can do something with this guy, got him there, and turned him into Hall of Fame Drew Brees. Which, it, it, it's a long – it's 90 minutes. I don't know who has time to go listen to it unless you're just a diehard Saints fan. But Sean Payton was about as, like, candid and emotional as I've ever heard. He told so many cool stories, yeah. one of which being – and, I mean, I've known this for a long time, but they had to aggressively outbid everyone for Brees – not knowing for sure that he would ever throw the same way ever again because he tore his labrum, but they were just like, 
we won't get him otherwise. Nobody's signing up to come here. There's still water in half the city. Like, it, I mean, it's crazy to think about. And he's, he had a story in his press conference about how, like, it wasn't until week three of the ensuing season he made, like, a back shoulder throw to Marcus Colston in, in Cleveland or something, and he was like, that's when I felt confident that he would be able to throw again. It's like, you weren't sure until right. week two? You, like forget training camp and all that. I mean, you had to get what you could get, right? Yeah, it's it, it's the greatest free agent signing in the history of professional sports, probably. Mm. I mean, when you just think about all of the impact that it wound up having. All right, Amber. Well, I don't have as a passionate story as these guys <laughs> did, but uh, I mean, a lot of things happened this weekend in sports around and even in the NFL. All these crazy games. Yeah. But to be honest, if I'm just being candid, and mine is pretty simple. One thing that did stand out to me was what happened with Green Bay and the Packers. Because, you know, we come on here and we talk, and Nick is one that talks about it all the time, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers. No, and when they Dave. face that's Dave. But you too, you have mentioned He's it. Good. He's great. He's great. But when the Cowboys are going to face him, yeah, I think that's something we all agree on. I don't treat him like Luke Skywalker. I'm, like you, I'm usually the one that treats him like Yoda. Or well, Obi Wan, whatever you want to say. <laughs> My point being is that it, it was one of those things that it just takes me back to the Cowboys and thinking of that and thinking like, man, I'm not saying that the Cowboys were great or that I expected them to really step it up in the playoffs, but when you see little things like that and then Tom Brady losing, little things like that, guys that you put them up here and then they lose and then you're like, man. You never know what kind of magic could have happened with the Cowboys and how far they could have gone <laughs> with like yeah. a guy like Aaron Rodgers already out of the race and just things like that that leads me back to how sad this season ended. You know, that does bring up an interesting question, and I saw a lot of people talking about this on Twitter as they were watching those games. Was there anything that you saw last weekend that made you think – uh, differently about the Cowboys or made you wonder, like, man, that was a missed opportunity? Yeah. Was there anything that you saw last weekend that just kind of made you think differently? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I applaud the NFL for growth. You know, everybody wants to get better and, and you want to improve on things, even if you make mistakes. I love it how a week later the NFL has figured out that, you know, maybe the back judge can, can spot the ball. <laughs> you know, it's not, it doesn't have to be the umpire to run in 60 yards. I mean, if, the, if it's closer to the back judge, you, you got seven on the field and four others, yeah. and then a whole, you know, in New York sitting there as well. So the closest one to the ball that can touch it, do it, especially yeah. in a frantic moment, then nobody has to come running in and tackle the quarterback and bull rush people down and, and waste some seconds. I thought it was great by the NFL for able to do that. A one week later, it's awesome for them. Kudos. I bitter, bitter much? No, no. Okay. I think it's great. Sure. We're looking for growth. I mean, you know, Des makes a catch and it goes down and he moves the ball here, and then all of a sudden, three years later, they say, you know what? That was a that catch. Was a catch. Yeah. Romo drops the snap in Seattle. You know, a block of ice coming back there, and all of a sudden, the, the league says, you know what? We need to control. There are our own ball boys here. We don't need to let our own, you know, Seattle's ball boys control what kind of ball. Let's do our the NFL, you know. So it's cool. These playoff losses are just changing rules for the NFL. You got to love it. <laughs> that was well said. That was good. Um, I just think watching watching these games, I think in today's NFL, I, you got to be able to get home with four pass rushers. Yeah. That's, that was what I took away. And that's – yeah, San Francisco did the same thing to Green Bay that they did to to Dallas. Obviously, the, the weather didn't help, but Rodgers wasn't comfortable. I think he got sacked three times, rushed a lot more than that. Obviously, I mean, Tampa, or excuse me, L.A. made Brady look awful because I mean, mm-hmm. he didn't have time. Yeah. Von Miller and Von Miller and Aaron Donald combined for like seventeen pressures in that game, and he got he got sacked three times as well. That's somebody was like. Which again, I get it. You're frustrated at this time. What we saw from Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen, I don't even know what to say to that. Best I, game I've seen all season, and 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 the best quarterback performances I've seen yeah. all season. And I just think you have to come to the very uh, painful realization that, like, I don't. If you're hoping for your quarterback to be that, good luck. I just I don't know what to say. You know, those guys are unicorns. Um, but somebody was like, all I saw all weekend was quarterbacks getting the job done when Dak Prescott couldn't. And I'm like, not to let those guys, not to let him off the hook, but I saw Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers looking mortal as hell when yeah. faced with pass rushes that their offensive line couldn't handle. Yep. 
It's football. Unless you have a 6-5 rocket launcher who can <laughs> run a 4-5. I'm yeah. Josh, Josh Allen, I probably owe him an apology. I didn't think he was I didn't think he would translate to the NFL. I didn't see it. It just I, I'm a big believer like even if you're not a finished product in college, I think you should lift your team and just obviously be the best person on the field. I didn't think he was that guy. Um I certainly didn't think he was capable of playing at the level we've seen over the last month of this season. Uh, I know Herbert has wild. something to say about this, but I, I just feel I've said it a couple times. I feel like that it's like Manning versus Brady mm-hmm. every year, you know, with those two. But I mean, Herbert will have you know he'll be yeah, in the, in the conversation yeah. as well. But he he'll need better guys around him. I mean, those teams are great, and then they're good. What what's your do you have um, one? Well, I, honestly, Sorry. it was the, it was the playoffs, and I actually had a couple different thoughts coming out of the playoffs, and I'll just run these down for you. The first one was Joe Burrow in Cincinnati. They're playing with house money at this point. Like, yeah. If you're a fan of that team, even though you've not had experienced this probably in your lifetime, then the, the the beautiful part about it is you're well ahead of schedule. So I love what what I'm seeing from that team, and they've kind of become my darling team that I'm kind of rooting for. The other thing that I thought about is, and it, there's been a lot of talk about Aaron Rodgers and what they're going to do with him this offseason. And I started looking at some of the money, and Nick, you and I talked about this yesterday. Did you guys know that basically it's $27 million of dead money if the Green Bay Packers trade him or release him. Yeah. I'm not understanding where all the conversation is coming from that he's not going to be a Green Bay Packer. Unless he's going to retire. Right. I just don't see how how Green Bay is going to make that work. $27 you're gonna, million. Yeah, you're going to have $27 million of dead money to not have Aaron Rodgers. I just don't see how that's going to work, you know? And so all the talk that's out there about where is he going to be next year, to me it's uh, pretty clear. He's either going to be in Green Bay or he's going to be on his couch. One of the two. It's ironic to me that they probably – pissed him off when they drafted a first round quarterback. Uh it's the ironic part of it is is that the the Packers did the exact same thing to Brett Favre to yeah. draft him. Right. And it was kind of weird. It was That's like I'm irony. not I'm not done. I'm still gonna play and so it is it is weird. I, I wouldn't have done it if I was Green Bay. I'd give the guy help. He's still great. Yeah. He's still he's still he's gonna win the MVP. Yeah. Like this it's they should have helped him more and that's probably what started it all i don't know but that's also where i look at him and i'm like dude you did the the same thing was done for you yeah so why are you really that upset like you've you've obviously seen this franchise will do that and they've had success doing it like they're one of the few franchises that's had that level of quarterback play for that long a period of time yeah and it's reflected in their ability to win that actually it goes back to what i was going to say which some people came at me for this opinion because i get it like you want to to be the best, you got to beat the best. But if Rodgers is potentially mulling retirement, and Brady sounds like he's right. mulling retirement, you look around, all the quarterback talent in the NFL is in the AFC right now. Like yep. it's loaded over there. And then you look at the NFC and you're like, okay, Russell Wilson's still a good player. That situation's not ideal. But if those two or even one of them retires, Dak's like the best quarterback in the NFC, <laughs> right? That's and that's not even a stretch to say. Arizona enters. And, the okay, chat. yeah, I mean exactly. Kyler's there, <laughs> Is that what they say? and I, Stafford's still playing. Yeah, I get yeah. that. Yeah. I, I should say he's in the conversation at least. Yeah. And then I just Nick brought it up with Herbert. Like I feel so bad for anybody that's got to figure out how to consistently win in the AFC, knowing that Allen and Mahomes are like twenty six. Burrow's 25. Mm-hmm. Herbert's younger than that. Good luck, Raiders. J- uh, Lamar Jackson's only 25. It feels like Lamar's been in the league forever, but he's only 25. Right. Oh, man. I just think... They got a lot of quarterback talent in that conference. They're, I know it... it they're going, uh, they're oh. going to change the, the Pro Bowl uh, format once again. That right there is going to change it because it's going to be like these three quarterbacks made it, like you you know like Herbert and whatever, and then all these Lamar's out like seriously, and then all of a sudden the AFC in the NFC, you know, <laughs> yeah, you got Jalen Hurts is going to make it. it. I mean, like, you know, wait a second, yeah. Kyler's there, Stafford's there. Um, we I'm, a year from now we could be talking about Justin Fields, Trey Lance, maybe. Trey Lance, yeah. But the, I Where's just Jimmy G going to? I'm. Just, why are they trying to run this guy out of town? Well, but you gotta also admit, admit like he's not that they good. didn't, they didn't. The 49ers didn't, oh, do, I, they didn't play great. It. They had a great special teams or a couple great yeah. special teams plays that won that game for them. Which, by the way, that's a part of the game. I'm not taking anything away from them. 
But I think when you start talking about Jimmy G, like they probably want a little more from the quarterback position. Yeah, I mean, know? of course. And they've obviously already invested in. You watch, you watch those two games. Dallas too. Jimmy tried to give the Cowboys the game. Yeah, I, yeah. you watch both of those games, and you're like. I understand why you're good enough to still be playing, and I understand why your top priority in the offseason was improving your quarterback. Yeah. Like it, I think he'll be Tyrod Taylor, where he'll just be a starter for some teams until they get the young guy going. This is which is what he's doing now, you know. Yeah. And he just happened to be in the championship. He game. won't be done at whatever level point Trey Lance takes over. No. Somebody else will be very happy to bring mm-hmm. him in and make them their starter. Any team that any team that feels pretty good about their roster. Should want him. I yeah. mean, Denver's a great example. Yeah. Like if Denver, Absolutely. if if the magical Rogers trade doesn't happen, Denver should want Jimmy G. Now, New Orleans might be Absolutely. In, in the market and say that's a guy we can bring in. And Pittsburgh have to do something. Maybe. Yeah. I just think the the path. I know it. I know it. It hurts to hear this right now. Nobody wants to hear it right now. But Washington. the path deep into the playoffs in the NFC looks so much nicer yeah. than it does in the AFC. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our first break. When we come back, I want to talk about coaches. we got a lot to talk about there. There are coaches that are doing interviews. There are coaches that are being talked about in the media. we got a lot of things we're going to discuss there. We'll do that when we come right back. This is DallasCowboys.com radio. At AT AT&T, everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. For turning your living room into your office and your gym. For teaching grandma how to video call and teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone new and existing customers our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone, even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network is busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. The Cowboys way. Where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Before there was a draft, you could size up a cowboy by three simple factors. The crease in his hat, the bend of his brim, and his unbending attitude. A man Stetson didn't just protect him from what life threw at him. It projected a rugged, unstoppable spirit. Stetson hats are still American-made with pride right here in Texas. They're still the unofficial crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find a retailer nearest you at stetson.com slash cowboys. Back to the break. Whether you're watching from home, cheering in the stands with Essilor lenses, you'll see every exciting play. Book an appointment at your local Essilor experts and find the perfect Essilor lens for you. See more, do more, Essilor. Welcome back. Second segment of The Break Live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. Let's talk coaches. And I want to start with Mike McCarthy, and I want to take us back to the final game uh, of the season, the, the playoff game the Cowboys lost. My question for you guys is how much blame – do you give McCarthy for that loss? When you think about things like uh, the delay penalty after the fake punt, uh, the final play, how much blame do you give him for what transpired that day? Um, a, a lot. You're the head coach. Your team wasn't ready to play. Team wasn't ready. You worked all year to get home field advantage. You get home field advantage. Your crowd's into it. It's not that. It's not a pro 49ers crowd you're in it you you know you do everything and then your team's flat and you noticed it and, and, and he noticed it yeah. i mean he, he, whatever he said nervous angst whatever he said he noticed it and so that's that goes on him maybe the players just don't have it but that's on him to to get it there and then some of those plays you said i mean i i throw in you know if there's a big shiny spot on the field of sun i wouldn't throw a crucial third down pass to a receiver over there who's not wearing eye black don't do that. Yeah. Throw it over here. I'm sorry, and we can't see. So, I mean, like, there's little things about the game, and if you're not the offense coordinator, you're not the defense coordinator, you don't call the plays, then you should be doing those things. 
Yeah, that's if you're a walk around head coach and you're not calling the plays. I know it, it, this is like simplistic, and sometimes memes take on a life of their own, but. It sure seemed. I mean, the 49ers didn't look nervous walking out of their locker room with that big ass boombox, like <laughs> swagging down the tunnel. Yeah. Uh, why? Why were you nervous? This is a team full of like guys in their prime. Lot. I mean, lots of important members of this team have been in the playoffs before. You're playing at home. Why? Why are you nervous? Yeah. Why? Why did you have 14 penalties? Why? It, why has that been a Jerry Jones said it um, amazingly last week? He was like, I don't want to hear about how we're working on penalties in the offseason. Right. Why weren't we doing that when it was happening every week? Yeah. And that falls, I mean, that should fall on a walk around head coach who's like, you look, you go look at the trends and you're like, man, we've been averaging nine penalties a game for the last month. That's not good enough. Did you see that they were nervous before the game? Because I didn't. I didn't. No. Amber saw it. Uh, thank you. And let me take <laughs> I did a not. moment. Let me take a moment here because people like to give me crap all the time. Anytime I make a remark like that, oh, you, you don't know what you're talking about. I know what my eyes are talking about. I know what I see with my eyes. And I did see it pregame. It, the energy was just off. You just looked right before the game started while they're warming up and everything. You look at both sides of the benches, the field. And you see the 49ers, I see they're about like fighting each other. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Well, it turns out that they're pumping each other out and just like high energy. And then I look at the Cowboys and they're just standing around holding a helmet. And that was basically it. I'm like, oh, God. But going back to this, your question, Derek, about head coach, I, I left last show, last week's show, Walking out and thinking, hmm, okay, what are really, really the responsibilities of a head coach? Like, what is Mike McCarthy full on if you had to list? This is what you do on a weekday, and this is what you do game day that has a full on effect on how the Cowboys perform right the, the day of the game, as opposed to what I'm trying to get at, as, as opposed to how the players play on the game and then what the coordinators are doing during the game. You know what I mean? Like, while you're trying to figure out who is here to blame and how much blame does the head... I mean, yeah, he's the face of the whole team and has to stand up there, but as far as, like, duties, what are his duties exactly? Like, during the course of the week, typically, he oversees the like the staffs as they put their game plan together and it's up to him to decide like how much time he spends with who he's always he's said time and time again he kind of lets kellen take the lead on that but he leans more offensively because that's his background and Uh, and most importantly i'll say this real quick most importantly i think and this is with any leader i think his primary responsibility is to identify and solve problems. So as he's watching his team prepare, as he's watching his coaches prepare, he's identifying, this was an issue last week. Let me spend a little extra time over here making sure I stress the importance of what we need to do to to do this. Let me go solve this problem over here. I see this is happening over here. I need to deal with this. Like that's what leadership is. So if you're a walk around here coach, to me that's your first and, and most primary responsibility is identify problems and solve them because in a lot of instances, the people that are close to it may not see it and certainly may not have the answers to it. So yeah, and, and it should be uh, – you also should allow yourself to be more of a coach for the entire team. You know, I think sometimes if you're an offensive coordinator, I think it was Holmgren's teams back in the Green Bay. I remember some defensive players were like, yeah, our offense is great. He calls the plays. He's the head coach. Defensively – didn't have the same kind of pulse um and so that's that's one of the things that that goes against you a little bit so if you're a if you're a coach that handles everything you should have a better pulse of the entire team the entire roster kind of know what's going on with them uh i don't know if he does that but i'm just saying that's one of the reasons why you do that i guess what i'm trying to get at is too it's like how much do you put on kellen versus mike mccarthy rather than people when you get on twitter people asking oh Different head coach, different head coach versus different offensive coordinator type of stuff, you know? Well, I think it, I think it still goes to McCarthy because it goes back to the last year in that game against Washington on Thanksgiving when, you know, uh, Fossil called a fake punt. It's like, what? You don't get to call things? Yeah. Like, yeah, the, I mean, it's your job over here to rein him back in. So. Yeah. That's when you throw your Uno card. Like, no, I'm trumping what you're saying. I'm going to do something different. Yeah, like the draw, too. 
I mean, like, he, like, no, I don't, I don't know if I like that call. Let's think of something else. The Which again, oh. they say it fit within their their time frame. They okay. say 14 seconds. Now, again, I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying he, no, does, no, he doesn't. No. He agrees he, that that was the no. Right he, call. he 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 backed it up yeah. in the press conference. I don't we got, agree. We got a tweet yesterday from somebody. I think the Dallas Stars. You probably don't know this, but I think the Dallas Stars scored. Like, they scored 14 in, seconds into their game, and somebody tweeted us. Let's see, they can score in 14 seconds. I'm like, I mean. The, just the whole Chiefs thing, yeah. 13 seconds, it's like, I think there's a big difference here. I don't know about you, but yeah. I think having a timeout changes things. A oh, yeah. Or two. Right. It does. It's yeah, just, it it's like, does. It's just, it's piling. I just, Cowboys wait, wait, oh, it, 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 it always But that's it a always part will. of, that's a part of always, being here. That's a part of the yeah, thing. I, know. I actually wanted to ask you guys that question as you guys started talking about the nervousness and all that stuff. Like, it, do you think that at, at some point, maybe that time is now, do you think at some point the pressure of playing here – just becomes so heavy that because again you're talking about a team where all eyes are on this team no matter what's yeah. happening good or bad yes where you're just yeah. it's just so much do you think at some point it can just be so much pressure to where you are going to have a team that should be confident but they're nervous because there's just so much pressure maybe not even pressure hype too uh, i think i mean that's the double-edged sword. It's all. It's cool to brag about how everybody wants to watch you and you set the rating record all the time but I this team will never ever 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 sneak up on somebody. It just won't happen right. because the first time the Cowboys win two or three games in a row, it all Here like the, the circus comes to town. That's what they're talking about on the national talk shows. The fan base is excited. The team has to deal with that. Uh, so I I mean I think it's pressure. I think it's just um, notoriety for lack of a better word. Like it's fitting because this is what the 49ers were Mm -hmm. like the 49ers snuck into the playoffs and everybody was like, don't think you want to play this team. That'll never be the Cowboys ever. And I think that matters. I think history continues to prove that that matters. It's not always the reason why they come up short in these situations, but I don't think it helps. Yeah, I think they're going to have to be number one or number seven to get to to a championship game or past. And I do think at seven, I think. That's the best way you're going to do it is kind of be the wild card team and didn't win the division, but you're pretty good. And now you got your pieces back together and, you know, you win this game, but the pressure, you know, oh, you're not going to win this game. And then you do and all that. You can kind of do that. Or you're just so good. I think Dave said it in the press box after the game. It's going to have to be a team that's so good and so powerful that that could just withstand all of the hype, all that because they're just better. And I think that happens with the offensive line. You get your offensive line because you don't have to. I mean, that will travel. If you're big and strong and you're going to just maul people, that will that will happen in Lambeau. That will happen in, at SoFi. That'll happen at AT and T. It'll happen anywhere. And I think that's where the offensive line has got to get. You got to get to that mauling thing stage again. I think it does go back to the voice that they are listening to because me personally, as someone who deals with like anxiety or whatever, I understand that it's only human for you to feel nervous before anything but if you have the right voice in your ear going out and out you're even if i have anxiety right now you're gonna make me run through this wall if i need to you know so it it goes back to that even especially when they were coming off a win like the last game that they had of the season that they were great yeah playing against backups and things like that but it was still the kind of ending sorry the kind of ending that they needed to at least get their energy back up and all that. So I think it does go back to the leadership Mm -hmm. and the voice and all that because, yes, you can be nervous, but there is no reason that you're walking out on the field on a playoff game and not feeling pumped and ready to go no matter what. Even if you there's always a chance for you to lose, you're going to give it your all and go out there thinking that you're going to win this game. Well, that's the perfect lead into the next question. You talk about leadership and that right voice. My question for you guys is, do you think McCarthy is providing the right kind of guidance for his coaches and for his players? And I'll give you a few examples what led me to this question. Number one, you think about uh, this last off, this last season and the offense and Kellen Moore. And for whatever reason, they got to the midpoint of the season and the offense fell off. And it didn't seem like they had any answers Did he have enough answers for him? You go back to last year, the defense didn't seem like they had answers. I don't know that the head coach was necessarily helping them out of that hole. You even look at um, 
uh, all the stuff that was going on this year where there was this kind of preoccupation with the referees and it didn't seem like there was enough of a voice being, uh, you know, enough of a voice out there saying to these players, stop worrying about the referees because it continued to be something they were talking about after games. Do you think he's giving the right kind of guidance to his coaches and to his players? The penalty thing is a really good point because no, I mean, it, I think it was the Cardinals game. A bunch of players were like, yeah, Mike, Mike told us that we got to play two different teams like that was his message in the post game locker room and in that cardinals game cliff kingsbury they basically stole a timeout from the cowboys knowing that they could just keep this unit on the field they would be confused they'd run around they'd call timeout and it ended up it ended up affecting the game Mm -hmm. you know because they knew the cowboys were going to do that so that that that's a you know that's a mindset too from the opponents that they kind of know that you're undisciplined at times. This is one of the, it's a question that it's easy to just like lean into the most recent thing that happened. But I mean, there have been evidence of him doing a good job with that. I mean, to cut ties with Mike Nolan immediately. I mean, you got to give him credit for the Dan yeah. Quinn hire, even if it was Dan that that revitalized the defense. Mike figured out what needed to be done, and. I, Kellen Moore's public enemy number one right now. I think that's fair, honestly. Like I have lost a lot of confidence in Kellen Moore from November until now. But I think we would all agree. We, I, I think you would prefer in a vacuum, like oh, like that's great that the head coach recognizes the play caller and doesn't want to get in the way of that. I mean, it would be so easy to sit here in a different universe and be like, McCarthy's in the way. Like, McCarthy, he's stifling Kellen Moore. I mean, Jason Garrett caught a lot of flack for that. A lot of people thought Jason Garrett, like, handcuffed Kellen. And so I I think it's a, a progressive and a helpful attitude to let your coaches do their thing. Um, and maybe point- Kellen Moore just reached the ceiling of – of what he's capable of. I don't know. At what point, and, and we're making a lot of, of assumptions here. Of course. I mean, very, very plainly. Like McCarthy could have been in his ear and could have been talking through him with him during the weeks and helping him along. It the, the results didn't change, and that's why I'm asking this line of question. But at what point do you think, going to what you were saying, Dave, a coach does have to step in and say, okay, we're not getting this, we're not moving beyond this, we're not figuring this out, so let me use my experience, I guess especially with a guy like Kellen who has limited amount of experience as a play caller, with Mike having as much experience as he does, do you think that maybe that was a situation where he should have stepped in more and been way more involved in the play calling just because he has the experience and maybe he could have provided something to help him out of that funk? I I I sort of expected I was like I was half expecting that to happen all through the final month of the season. Just like like oh I wouldn't be surprised if today's the day that this comes out, you know? Yeah. Uh, maybe he should have, but again, I I lean toward the idea like when you start throwing your weight around and like making drastic change like I've in my experience just being around the league I feel like that is more likely to cause trouble than not but it's easy to sit here in in the aftermath of everything and be like yeah he probably should have done that you know I mean they won they won 12 games this year and that that that, that's what makes it tough because yeah they lost some games against teams that were better than them um, but you know teams Teams upset teams all the time. You know, like Washington beat the Bucks, and you know I think the Giants beat a couple playoff teams. I mean, so you 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 got to get credit for winning the games. I mean, it doesn't matter if your division is bad; you still have to go out and win the game. So you got to get credit for that. Uh, I think it's I think it's what's unfair is the whole game clock management stuff because that is that is usually comes down to lazy reporting because of what you see and you're like, oh, it didn't work. Bad management. This team has more points than anyone in the NFL scoring in the final two minutes of a game or a half. And they led the league. That it comes down to two minute offense yeah. running. And and I I get it. We saw the 49er game at the end, but I'm just saying you can't be that bad of clock management and score at the end of the half so many times. So I, I I don't think he's getting a fair shake all the time. Elephant in the room here. I, Stephen Jones says it all the time about players. Player acquisition is 365 days a year. Well, is coaching? I mean, that's what it's coming down to. If they feel like there's a, a better option out there, Jerry even said it. If there's a better option out there, then I would make the move. Well, <laughs> I'm just saying maybe there is. Maybe there isn't. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, But, I, I mean, they say it all the time about players. Why wouldn't you say it about coaches? Yeah. Talent acquisition, full year. 
Well, I'm sure it's the same with coaches. Yeah. You want you want to get you want to get better, and I, if if there's better option out there, then they need to look into I'm it. I'm gonna have a big problem if Dan Quinn walks away and is unable to stay here, one way or another. Well, he's only interviewed for eight teams. So I was going to say, I, I I just here's, prepare yourself. Well, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're actually going to take our final break. When we come back, I do want to flip the conversation to the coordinators. They're both interviewing. They both got interviews lined up. Seems like every day you hear about a different one. We'll talk about what the Cowboys lose if they lose one or both of those defensive coordinators. We'll do that when we come back. This is DallasCowboys.com Radio. Hi, I'm Clint Tillerson with... And I'm Jay Novacek, and we're both with... United United Ag and Turf, Turf, the official tractor provider of the Dallas Cowboys. So, if you need a tractor to bale some hay, a mower to cut some grass, or a gator to get some chores done... Get a John Deere at United Ag and Turf. And then, let's get to work. Hey, Jay, that's my line. (laughs) Well, not today. Get to work with a John Deere tractor package that's just right for you and your budget. Visit UnitedAgandTurf.com. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like, where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day, where we are all defined by one single thing, the star, where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. At AT AT&T... Everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. For turning your living room into your office and your gym. For teaching grandma how to video call. And teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone, new and existing customers, our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone. Even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network is busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. New Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. You deserve it. I do deserve that. You deserve decadent flavor without sugar. And a day at the beach without sand getting everywhere. And a relaxing bath that your children don't interrupt. I deserve all that? It's really just a visual metaphor for Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. Everything you want, nothing you don't. A visual metaphor on the radio. I do deserve that. Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. The zero you deserve is finally here. Back to the break. WrestleMania comes to AT&T Stadium April 2nd and April 3rd. It's a two-night event. Get your tickets on SeatGeek.com. Welcome back. Final segment of the break live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. Uh, let's talk about defensive. Co- I mean, let's talk about the offensive and defensive coordinator Dan Quinn, Kellen Moore, both taking uh, interviews. I just read this morning that Dan Quinn is now in for a second interview. I think it was in Chicago. Is that right? Yes. So he's he looks like he's even advancing in this to where he's he's already there was already a report that he's supposedly a finalist in Denver. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot going on with Dan Quinn. Let's start with Quinn. Let's start with him. What does Dallas lose if they don't have Dan Quinn? Well, at the very bare minimum, we know they lose a coach that all of the defenders on this team love. I mean, the player coach reputation. He came in with it, lived up to that. He he seems so well liked by all of those guys. So a guy that they're bought into, uh, a guy who picked your most recent draft class, which was very defense heavy, by the way, um, and and kind of has a handle on on the talent here and the schemes that they work well within. Yeah, right off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's just a he's just a tough dude. He's tough, mentally tough, I think. I think he I mean, you have to be mentally tough to go through what he's gone through as a coach. You know, I mean, like like I, what happened in Atlanta happened, you know, and and um he's not the first one, you know, cuz Brady can do that to other teams, but like, you know, I think from a, a mentally tough guy and I think the players feed off on that. Uh, I don't want him to go to any place. Um Chicago, though, I don't think you could be the coach in Chicago if you're not, you know, a tough sob. I mean, you just have to be, and I think they would be a good fit there. But that's if he leaves, and I don't, I don't know. I've said it a hundred times. I've said it on here. I think this is a very unique situation. Uh, I'll be surprised if he stays. I'll be surprised if he leaves. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I can just sit on the fence, then just sit right on top. It is. I mean, we've seen. 
we've seen Jerry pull out stops to keep people before. And, and I, it's hard to read into these situations because it's shrouded in so much secrecy. And like Jerry has gone out of his way to not want to talk about anything having to do with any of his coaches, really. But if if that was a thing, wouldn't it have happened by now? Or like is is Jerry waiting for somebody to get an offer before he counters with stay here for this instead. I mean, I don't know. I feel like you've had ample opportunity to try to convince him to stay by. You certainly now. don't want to be bidding against yourself. That's, that's a good point. Actually, that's right? a really good so point. So you wait until there's something I out don't there have a mind and, then for business. Say, and then you say, okay, I will beat that by whatever. And I'll, I'll keep you here. And, and honestly, I do wonder if it's a situation <laughs> with him where it's more about the fact that, it, or I'll speak for myself. If I were him, I would be looking at it like I'm still going to I got great enough players here on this defense that I'm still going to be a commodity next year. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if if there isn't a position that's available right now that has the things in it, I think are necessary. And each coach probably has that list of those two or three things that are like this is what makes it necessary to win quarterback pass rusher, you know, whatever it is, right? Whatever those things are that he's like, these are absolute must-haves. Knowing where I came from in Atlanta, I know I can't win without these things. If I'm him, I'm not taking a job unless it has those things. I'm not going to convince myself, well, maybe I can make this work. If it doesn't clearly have those things, I'm not taking it because I feel like I could stay here and my defense is still going to be top 10 next year. It's going to be a really good defense. I don't think you will be. Why not? I think if if he leaves... Whoever it is, I don't even know who the guy would be, the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys, but I just don't think that it would be uh, the same defense or even take a step forward. Well, let me be clear. I was actually saying if he came back, he could rely on the fact that he's going to have this defense a top 10 Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, And that's where I'm like, so if I'm him, I don't run for any position. I only go if I'm like, whatever those things are that I absolutely have to have in place, unless they're already in place, I'm not going. I'll stay here. I'll keep this defense up there in the top 10. And next year, I'll be right back in this cycle again, and they'll so, be talking about me again. I was going to ask you guys just real quick. Why Why was it that in the first place he ended up being a defensive coordinator? Because he was a head like coach. Back in the day or here? He got fired. He was a head coach who got fired. So what happened? Because I think that you also have to look at the history and like w- what happened that led him to where he's at right now, even though he's being uh, highly talked leads. about. Blown leads, watermelon kicks, things like that. Super Bowl twenty eight to you three. You know what I think it was? I think he lost his offensive coordinator. I think that was the difference. You look at that Atlanta team that went to the Super Bowl, Shanahan was that offensive coordinator. The next year he left and they never were that offense was never the same after he left. They were they were doing remarkable things that year when they went to the Super Bowl on the offensive side of the ball. Well. Once he left, it all changed. And I think that was the biggest undoing of of of, of Quinn in, and in Atlanta. And ironically, and I, he didn't call the defense when he was there, but like their defense was never good. Even the year they made the Super yeah. Bowl, their yeah. defense but wasn't they were good. Just an, they, were, they were a help to that offense. I think they played they were complimentary fine. football. But that offense and was really, really good under Shannon but, but, in Atlanta. Let's also be clear, too, like about you know, Dan Quinn is a great coach, and I think he's, you know, he's changed a lot of things. But if you were to like, we keep Dan Quinn, but you're going to lose Parsons and Diggs, no one's going to take that. Parsons, Diggs, and and Tank, and maybe if it's Randy, whatever. Like that, that's that's the core. That's the core. Any defensive coordinator that's been good in this league is going to come in, and I think going to be pretty good because Micah Parsons mm-hmm. is ready to take the next level. He might be the best defensive player in football. Trayvon Diggs, I don't care what his grades are. He takes the ball away. He, he he's he's going to get even better. I, I think those pieces right there, and maybe that's why Dan Quinn will stay. Right. I don't. I mean, I, I that's think, my hope. <laughs> I think that's why I look at the like free agent guys and what happened last year under Mike Nolan versus what happened with the free agent guys that yeah. Dan Quinn brought in. Like last year, it was kind of like a wash. No <laughs> free agent guy did anything that it was wasn't really even a good. wash. It wasn't really a wash. It, 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 was, it was a really terrible, terrible failure. Year. Yeah, it was a Zerline year. didn't have, wash it clean. He, he did okay, but it yeah. was bad. It was bad. This yeah. year, just to make sure I use that right. Wash doesn't that mean that's bad? Yeah, no. all bad. Yeah, wash no, kind of means, means it's it even. Means it's kinda, it means, yeah, yeah. We'll call it okay, a wash. Okay, then I thought wash is like, like yeah. wash it no. away. It's terrible. No, like, no, 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 <laughs> no. This this shows a wash. We got young people. We got old people. You know, we got. Oh, so maybe like a flush. Flush is. 
Well, uh, that goes into well, dangerous territory. Plus, then, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, my point things. is, I don't know if you got ace king, <laughs> ace king, queen, jack ten. I mean, could be good. <laughs> yeah. Point being, actually, that's a, that's a straight, but it could be a straight flush. Sorry, that was when a you compare players that are not those guys. Micah Parsons, Trevon Diggs, what happens with the other guys yeah. on the defense? What happened to the rest of the linebackers and the safeties and the other corners? So things like that that I'm like, okay, what Dan Quinn proved to do with guys like that that weren't that the Cowboys didn't necessarily break the bank in free agency are things that I'm like, okay, I love this guy, bring him back, keep him here. How, however you can, but this is a tough spot. But yeah, that's well, why I think I don't know how it's, it's going to be next well, year. It's a depressing. That's part of why like getting bounced out of the playoffs is depressing. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic that the defense will stay good next year, but defense comes with a lot of variance. There's a lot of key free agents on this team, and and I always say this like. It's not Madden franchise mode where you click advance through the offseason and all of your guys get three points better. Like, that's not how it works in the real world. Some guys stay the same. Some guys get worse. Some guys, the scheme changes and they're not good at what's being asked of them anymore. So uh, there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic, but I don't think you can sit here in January. Even if Dan stays, I don't think you can sit here and be like, yeah, they're going to be better. It's like, I hope so. Yeah. I hope they make all the right moves and push all the right buttons, but you can't bank on that right now. Yeah. He's gotta he's gotta find some wild cards to the mix, you know, and and, and J. Ron Kurth to me was the biggest wild card and, and that was a guy that, that I thought, you know, he just said, I mean, I got a spot for him. Yeah. I mean, I, I could use this guy, you know, and he's and he's he's a type. Um to me though, this often this defense can take a a big step. Uh one of the key players, he's got to be able to do it. Is Kelvin Joseph? That's the biggest question I have. Is this off season? We talked about him off the field, per, his maturity, all that. How much are you concerned about that? Part? I'm concerned. I'm concerned. He, he his track record has been bad like that. Hmm. Athletically, he's great. His track record of sticking with the place and being under the rules and everything that goes into it and and being dedicated all the time has not always been there. If he takes that next level, if he, can, if he goes with Trayvon and they go, he tries to cover Stephon Diggs and all this stuff, if he <laughs> does that this offseason and really dedicates himself, I think he could be a good player. We saw signs of it. He can be good. I just hope Which, he's... by the way, that there were signs of that in college as well. It just had both those two yeah. stops. There were just these things that it came up to where at some bit. point they were like, we just, we, we'd rather be without you than be with you in the way that I you mean, are. I mean, I'm not going to call names, but there was a player uh, from last year that was, a, that his signs, you know, arrow was pointed up and he, he was ready to take it next level. And he had a bad off season. He didn't, he didn't come in. He didn't do the, the, the same things as, as he wanted to. And he was pretty much an afterthought of the season. So, I mean, y'all can figure it out if you want, but there was a defensive player ready to take the next level that didn't, and I think it was because of his offseason. So, a big, big step for Kelvin Joseph to, to go and do that. I know who he's talking about. I think. I'm, I'm like, I mean, wait, I I'm, I'm trying to go through want, this in my no, mind. I don't want to call out people for whatever because you know you don't know all the story. You yeah. just kind of hear some things like that. But just there's a guy that you thought would be a starter and be there and be ready to play, and he really it didn't it didn't pan out. Um, maybe he has a better offseason. So okay. All right, well, keep thinking about that. All right, let's move over to the let's move over to the offensive side of the ball. What does this team lose if they don't have Kellen Moore? Nick, uh, continuity in the offense. Um, they 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 lose. You know, you know, Dak's going to have to learn different. You know, he would have to learn. I think different scheme. I don't know. It depends on who they they bring in. Um, you know, he and he's willing to do some some different. You know, I like the some of them change uh, trick plays and stuff like that. Um, but you know, I. There, he could be better though. He could be better during the week. They they had too many slow starts, and I think that comes with preparation. Yeah, I like I said, tough question. It is it is a tough question because I mean, this offense has been really, really, really good at times. It's also gone into a shell and kind of lost its identity. The slow starts, the inability to run the ball. Um, whether or not it falls on Kellen Moore that Tony Pollard didn't have a role against the 49ers, I don't know, but he should have. That's somebody's fault somewhere. Someone made that decision, whether it was the OC, the head coach, the right. front office. Knows. Like it I don't know. Anybody, yeah. um, there's just a lot of disconcerting stuff that's happened there. And so I think it's knee-jerky to just be like, Any, anybody's better. Any, like, just get, get him out of here. But at the same time... <laughs> 
I I, th- I said it earlier in the show. Like I've I've lost some confidence there. Um, but just in terms of what they lose. Uh, it is interesting. McCarthy was asked about this at his press conference, just in the vein of like, you don't know whether or not he'll be here, and he was like, "Well, it'll it'll be the same. We're going to tailor it toward Dak Prescott. Like he's going to be at the center of everything, which is smart. But what does that mean? Like, are you just going to keep the offense and put it in the hands of a new person? Like, do you just promote a Doug Nussmeyer? You can't promote Ben McAdoo anymore. He's in Carolina." Yep. Which I feel, I think most people are probably like relieved to hear that news. Mm-hmm. If I had to guess, he was a good offensive coordinator, wasn't he? That's how he got the opportunity to be a head coach. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was the offensive coordinator for the Giants for a couple years when they were still good with Eli. I don't know if he was ever amazing. Yeah. But it's a moot point now. But I just, it's my question is just like, so were you just taking what Kellen has done and putting it in the hands of a new person? And not changing anything, you're not going to let somebody use their own terminology, or are you going to hire from outside the building? Like, it's easy to say we're going to build around Dak, but what does that mean if the guy that's been Dak's coordinator for the last three years is not in the building? Which I think Kellen will be here. I don't think Kellen's going to get a head coaching job, so yeah. probably doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely not as passionate. <laughs> about him than I am for uh, Dan Quinn. But um, you know what? I think I, I still haven't lost faith in, in Kellen Moore. And I think that he can take the offseason and really study and evaluate everything that he did and, and figure out how he can improve for another season. I don't think he's the right person to be a head coach just yet, at least at this point in his career. But I do think that he is a very smart guy and although I'm very down about what he did at the second half of the season I think he has brought new things to this offense that we haven't seen or like in a long time since Jason Garrett was here so at least that's a big step forward he brought in the creativity brought in different ways that he was using the offense and just needs to kind of take the offseason and and figure out how to get better. I think he has it in him, and he's still a very young guy starting out in his career, so it's only fair to say that for him starting right off the bat without any coaching experience and any of that, he's done a pretty (laughs) damn good job, how Americans say, (laughs) pretty damn good job. So, But, (laughs) but he yeah, he had a big, very bad hiccup there, but I think, uh, yeah, he, he can still turn things around and get it better here with the Cowboys. All right, let's go around the table. I want you guys to tell me uh, what do you expect to happen with both Dan Quinn and Kellen Moore? What do you expect to happen? I think Dan's gone. I I don't know. You're just going to be a finalist for that many jobs and not take any of them. Um, The big question for me is, like, will there be anybody left to promote from within? Because Joe Witt has had a few interviews for D.C. jobs. Um I think Dan's gone, and I would I would try to promote Joe Witt, or if you want to go after Mike Zimmer, that's fine. Um, and you? Sure. I, I just... <laughs> Reading between the tea leaves of the exchanges between Mike and Fangio, I <laughs> That'd just... That'd actually be pretty spicy. Right? I have a hard time believing that that would happen, but maybe. Um, and then I just... I think Kellen will be here. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, how, how, how much can I say? How much can I actually voice what I would like mm. to see? All you got to do is tell me. You think they're going to be here or you like think they're going to be gone? That wasn't the question. No, the what question do you think is going to happen? What do you going to happen? Yeah, what not what you want to see. I mean, I, I think Kellen Moore stays here with the Cowboys as the offensive coordinator. Dan Quinn, yeah, highly possible that he leaves. But what mood is Jerry Jones in right now? How is he feeling? How is he at home sitting down or maybe at his office in his desk feeling okay? How how crazy of a move can I make here? How <laughs> you know? Um, he seemed pretty upset at the end of the season, you know, even when he got on the fan, he seemed pretty upset about the loss. So I'm just you just never know what kind of craziness can happen yeah. with the head coaching position. And I think the only way you can really keep Dan Quinn is by making that kind of move. Because I don't think you keep him here by just giving him more money. Uh, and being like, oh, we'll just, I mean, you can't have him making more than Mike McCarthy. Well, like maybe could. not, maybe not more. Than, well, first of all, you could, but, you could, but maybe you not more than Mike, but just way more than your average well, let's DC. Let's also be clear about this. My understanding is that there's still money he's getting from Atlanta as well. So that yeah. factors oh, yeah. into this too. And I don't know, sometimes in the contracts, 
it kind of depends on whether you get another head coaching job. So if he got if his contract was set up such that like as a coordinator maybe he's not gets additive, but if he's a head coach it's not. Like that could also affect yeah, the, you know, I the think money it does go away. It does if go it away becomes if it becomes a head coach. Head coach. So yeah, so that's what does he really want though. So, so then money it's doesn't not just about money. Maybe. Yeah, and that's the point. Like I don't think I don't know that money necessarily drives this. He's the only one that can answer that question. But because he's still making that yeah. money from Atlanta, I don't know that money is really driving his decision. Mm. Go ahead, Nick. Didn't I already go? <laughs> you already said it. No, I. You know, Jerry didn't come out and say anything. I mean, he did say that he thinks Dak Prescott could win the Super Bowl. Yeah. So. He's given the quarterback support. He could have done that different way, but he did that. He didn't get the head coach support. He didn't. He could have. Could have easily done that. He didn't do that. He didn't want to give any. He want to talk about it. So, you know, Jerry can do whatever he wants. I'll say this. I think if McCarthy's the head coach next year, I think Dan Quinn will be the coordinator. Oh, huh? okay. And I don't know about Kellen Moore, but I do think Dan Quinn will be the coordinator if, if McCarthy's the coach. If Jerry decides to do some crazy stuff, then I think all all hell will break loose and it'll be different. And we'll have a fun all season. Do we do we. <laughs> We think that's happening. Like, do we? How confident do you feel that we're not out of the news cycle in terms of like? I don't think we're see, out of the news cycle. I've been I've been working here it's long the enough. Dallas Cowboys. I've that's been working here point. long enough to know that as soon as you feel comfortable that something's gonna stay the same or change, either way, it's gonna be well, I guess, different yeah, than what you're it'll, thinking. It'll like, be like it's just one right. way or the other. I mean, that, I phrase that poorly. So I don't know what to think. I phrase that, that poorly course. because like. Of course, we're not out of the news cycle because, like, Dan <laughs> has to make a decision. Yeah. Oh, Kellen, and by the way, we just find ways no. to make. But news. well, but yeah, that I be... guess I guess that's and Nick, I'll relate it to you. Like, how likely do you think it is that my life gets turned upside down <laughs> while trying I'm trying to plan this vacation? Yeah. I'm it trying to see. Let me tell you how it's gonna go. Yeah. All right, this has been the Super Bowl for the ages here. It's fourth and nine here. Mahomes with the ball has a chance to to win this game, but you know, Bosa is gonna be coming up. Off the off the edge here. You know what? Breaking news out of Dallas. The Cowboys have made a change. You know, I, yeah, Mahomes scored and the Chiefs won. But here's the thing. The, the, and then leading the next day, all the local newspapers, all the national newspapers, Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, I so. guess I just gave my Super Bowl pick. Yeah, I guess you know, so. But I just I, and sorry. I know we we have to tread delicate ground. Yeah. I understand, but like this this is shaping up to be a circus environment. To be honest with you, mm-hmm. well, I I don't like. I don't like firing people, fine. so I don't. No. I don't like supposing that what? something else is going to no. happen when you still have a guy no. here. No, no, yeah. no. no. Yeah. So uh, it's just, it's well, just. Put it this yeah. way: I just know there's a there's a big story that's just going to hover over this team for the foreseeable Absolutely. future. Yeah. And by the way, that could be for a year. I that know. Could be for two years. Yeah, like, I know. It, it could be a story that just kind of lingers out there, and and there's nothing. It may be nothing to it. But it can linger out there for a long time, it, you know. So that's just the nature of it. Like that's just a part of the Cowboys. The Cowboys yeah. have those kinds of stories that just kind of linger. You know, if you've, if you're like a head coach, you know, of like, I don't know, Texas Tech or something like that for a while, and it's been really stressful for you, and you just need a break. You probably don't want to go to Texas the next year. You know what I mean? If that, if if taking a break is what you need, you know what I mean? Because it's gonna be crazy. So I'm just saying. You know, which happened. Chris yeah. Beard did that. Texas Tech to Texas. That's really all I'm saying. But he wasn't looking for a break. He was like, "I'm right. ready for the big time." All, all I'm let's, saying let's is, deal is with that it. if if it's been a, a <laughs> stressful been time at a certain job, and Wait, you want to get really? out of it, yeah, Texas us this year? Texas made a huge hire, and it's not paying dividends. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying like, I'm sure he's looking at it like, "Dang, I don't." I don't is it, I, I don't. Bad. I, oh, we just dropped out of the top 25 no. when we started at six. So, yeah, so I paid just enough attention good. to know that LSU is pretty good. I didn't know. Good. I didn't know how Texas was yeah, doing. We, we have. We, we'll be playing Tennessee. We get, we get to play SEC this. Yeah, this y'all beat year. us. Whatever. No, the arrow's going down on y'all a little well, bit. We've been hurt. We had like three guys not playing. We I was wondering. LSU lost in a basketball game on Saturday, and I was wondering, are the fans in? In, in Baton Rouge, down or are they excited because the Bengals won? Uh, well, it goes it goes both ways. It like because it timed up perfectly. It was like, are you kidding me? We lost to Arkansas. Like they they, they tough, like they're not very good. Week. Well, but they lost to Tennessee. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I literally the, I was at a bar and LSU Tennessee was on one TV and the Bengals were on the other, and I I'm like yeah Joe are you, yeah 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 go Joe look over like. 
Oh, we're losing. Whatever. Okay. What's Joe doing? Let's go, Joe. Like, there's like, yeah, I mean, you don't want the basketball team to lose, but what the Bengals are doing is definitely more Why important. Why aren't you giving Jamar the same love? Jamar, like, too. No, no, no. Okay, I said right. that's Kelsey was like, I'm rooting for LSU because of this guy. And I was like, don't you dare forget yeah, Jamar Chase. Yeah, Jamar's doing his thing. Hey, they have, they have a few more, too. They got Tyler Shelvin. They're, they're at Baton Rouge North up there. Let's All go, right. Bengals. All right. Real quick. I don't want to end the show without doing this. I want to quickly get some pics from you guys of what's going to happen this weekend. NFC and AFC title games. You got Cincinnati. Cincinnati Bengals versus the Kansas City Chiefs. You got the San Francisco 49ers versus the Los Angeles Rams. Who wins each game? Give me your two games. picks. Chiefs 49ers. Chiefs 49ers Super Bowl. Yeah. All right. I will be rooting my heart out for Joe and Jamar, but I can't pick against Mahomes in his yeah. building. There's no way. Uh, Chiefs. <sighs> I, I go Chiefs Rams mainly just because I don't want to see a rematch. Like we just had that Super Bowl. Yeah. Plus, I don't know. It's 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 hard to beat the same team three times there in a season. There yeah. So Chiefs Rams. All right, Amber. Bengals and Let's Rams. go. All right, <laughs> AG. I you know, like it. You know, it'll be interesting. I know you're about to make a pick, but yeah. it's like with 55 years with nobody had nobody's home team went to the Super Bowl and we could have it twice two, in 2 years two, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah i mean now we also saw that does that matter for the rams I mean, no. it won't. I, I don't expect this week is going to be the same as that that final week like uh, i don't think they were going to be that i don't think it's going to be that overrun by the 49ers this week. i really don't maybe I, i'm wrong i saw I just, a story 49ers had uh, had one day advantage uh, at like a heads up because yeah, they, but they still start t- selling tickets like after the game's done yeah. because they didn't know where the yeah, game was going to be. It's, it's a five-hour drive, if assuming you live in the I, Bay Area. I get which all there's that. Niner get fans all, that. all over California. I get all that, but I just I kind of got a feeling it'll be a little different. I, first of all, I think the Rams are going to play better football than they played in that game. That's the most important part. Yeah. So I game. look at this. I look at this, and I say yeah. it's going to be Chiefs Rams. I think that's going to uh, be your. Super I was rooting for the wrong team. I know that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Well, I, we talked about that last week, though. I mean. The Rams have a nasty pass rush too. Like I don't know. I don't you know didn't if want it, to have to see Aaron Donald. I don't know if it would have well, mattered. I mean, this, I mean, with this interior offensive line, he didn't you got to face the Aaron Cardinals, Donald. and then the Cowboys would have been the one to play in Lambeau last week. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> I, it's <laughs> wow. No, not a lot of great options here. It's gonna take. It's gonna take some time. Yeah. All right. All right. We appreciate you joining us. We'll be back next week. Next Wednesday, we'll have more talk pick? for you guys. I pick Chiefs and um, and Rams. Chiefs Rams. All right. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Till then, for Nick Eatman, Dave Hellman, Amber Garcia, I'm Derek Eagleton. This has been The Break, live on DallasCowboys.com radio. So, This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about-